Three, two, one. Let me switch you around here. The airplane took off at 10.09 this morning from Payne Field. It's been flying around the skies in Washington for the last four hours. And you can see it here on final approach at Boeing Field in Seattle. Boeing Field. Let's just watch that airplane land. Boeing Field, Seattle, the maiden flight. Boeing 777X. Right on the numbers, there's the chase plane. Looks like a T-33. Right on the center line. Excellent. There's that little drogue chute static port off the tail. That's for the sta accurate uh, static port instrument systems. Let's take a look at for your pitot static systems. We look at that wing. They got, yeah, he's folding the wingtips on the runway. Look at that. Now, I don't know if they're going to prove that <laughs> as part of the daily operation. Doing that on the runway. Maybe so. Queenstown, New Zealand, check it in. went over to the east, did some testing up there, as Josh mentioned, about four hour flight. And then the airplane. Yeah, I'd want to fly that T 33. Yeah, these are beautiful images. So we'll just tell you. Uh, Look at you that. This video, you have Josh Green, Emily Sanchez, Ted Grady, one of our uh, Boeing test pilots here. Ted, uh, looking at that map. It's still got the spoilers map. deployed. Why did they choose that? It mostly is determined by weather and airspace. Uh, we have some agreed upon routes with air traffic control and able to get a, away from a you know, busy arrival pass into Seattle. So uh, generally it's you know northern Washington going east-west and that's generally what they did. Stayed out of the arrival pass and then try to stay at a convenient place for our chase airplane to be able to drop into Moses Lake, refuel and then come and catch them uh, without wasting a lot of time or fuel. Okay, so that was a little explanation of the flight plan they had today. I think that's probably an essential part of every first flight. Get a get a, a hero shot. For Look at those wings. Those a little bit about what they've been are based off the 787 design, or they they've learned from the 787 design how to make this high aspect ratio wing work for the triple seven X. Look at that. And of course, the new GE series engines, where they got the uh, stator. His, Stator veins worked out. Time to come back based on fuel and time in the air, and uh, they really accomplished everything they needed to for this flight. And Ted, can you share um, some of what you were doing after takeoff today and monitoring what the airplane was? I, I was in the telemetry room, just listening as all the, uh, the Germany. Thanks. Yeah, that basket-looking drogue chute thing was the uh, static yeah. port, the flight, which they uh, do on these test planes. It, it was drag the static so, port know, way behind the aircraft for greater accuracy there it is hanging down low very pleased with the way the, way the airplane behaved it uh behaved as expected uh it, it kind of validated uh, the initial validation of uh, some of those pre flight wingspan versus uh, the 380 not sure where we uh, practice this profile and and both uh Emily and i have seen this airplane a lot in our jobs look at that seeing it take off this morning we both had chills what, what was that moment like for probably you? chopper uh, videos exciting. it's uh, been a, a, a not long drone time. videos we're all excited to see it in the air and it's really like i said the, the start look at the size uh, of that tail pete it's you watching this it's the kickoff for to get going and start testing very cool so for people who might not know on the webcast the aircraft is taxiing now down boeing field um can you give us a little taste of where it's going and how it's getting there yeah, sure so it, it, it landed boeing on, uh, field to, on runway one four right and it cleared it i didn't catch it, it cleared it so they departed Payne field this morning did a four hour initial test flight and it's going to come to the north end of the uh taxi yeah four hours in the air to boeing field and then, then they'll get tucked in the parking 225 so versus was, 262. Um, comments online, people were asking about kind of the differences between... No, there is no MCAS in any other aircraft than the Boeing 737 MAX. MCAS is unique to the 737 MAX. Sure. Yeah, what a difference that day makes, right? These aircraft, the 777X, no other aircraft has MCAS in it.
Some aircraft have systems similar to an systems that how should I say that systems that accomplish the same thing that MCAS was supposed to accomplish but it's unique to the 737 MAX it will continue uh, initial airworthiness testing clear the envelope uh, and that will eventually allow uh, the full test crew to be on the airplane all the engineers in the back and then we'll well, we're going to do our, our Boeing development testing, do all the system testing. You know, you know, maybe they do need to retract the wingtips uh, on the uh, runway on to avoid the, uh, tagging things, taxiing around. So we had uh, talked a little bit yesterday, as you just mentioned. Yeah, the new GE high-efficiency engines. It's just the pilots, right, That's for right. this first flight. That's These right. engines are considerably derated over what they're capable of. And that's on the on the uh, uh, on the new triple seven X. We always want to be as safe as possible. And it was wear and tear on the stator vanes that caused a delay in the triple seven X program. They've got that worked out, I believe, at GE. Cheney, our chief triple seven X pilot, in the left seat in the flight deck today, and uh, Craig Bobbin, Boeing's chief pilot, in the right seat. That's right. Well, the production rate on the 777 and everything else at Boeing is all goofed up because of the 737 MAX program. The disaster of the 737 MAX program has delayed all the other programs at Boeing. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to be one of these chat moderators if I had the inside information. I think Boeing's going to survive just fine. Like I said before, we have no choice. There's, there's no other aircraft manufacturer out there. We've got a backlog of 4,000 737s and a backlog of over 5,000 jets. There's Pete. Say hi, Pete. Overall, Pete, this is not your grandpa's 777. This is your generation of 777s. I think the plan is for them to stop just short of turning in here, and they'll shut down there and get towed in. The main wheel, the the nose wheel is steerable. It's the uh, yeah. Pete was doing some technical help. The rear set of wheels, the last two, um, are allowed to swivel on those six wheel trucks, so they don't scrub the rubber off on that giant long six wheel truck. At least that's the way it is on the 200s and 300 design of the Boeing triple seven. They don't quite cast her like they did on the uh, C5. A little bit different. Look at that. Wow. Here's the uh, APU. There's that drogue for the static port, for the test aircraft. There's the six-wheel truck where these rear two can swivel. And there's that all new high aspect ratio wing. The super efficient high bypass turbo fans. Tune in to see the triple seven X. So it really shows how many folks are engaged with what's Boeing doing, what Boeing is doing right now uh, with this airplane. This uh, one of the questions we Yeah, how's the signal? Is the signal okay on this? Um, this is the CNET live feed. Looks like sixteen thousand folks watching. There was more than double that audience for the, the takeoff this morning. Capability of the triple seven eight nine. Uh, uh, both aircraft, in particular the triple seven eight <laughs> and then the full. Yeah, I wish I could be there doing the narrating. Uh, so uh, you're gonna hook up the tow bar now. Don't break the tow bar, boys. In front of live TV, in front of a million people. Payload. Um, the, so the range capability of the 777-9, the aircraft that we saw for the first time take off and land today, is around 7,300 nautical miles. Um, and then it's, 
the triple Yeah, plane. new car. I bet you it's even got that plane. new aeroplane smell. Um, it's going to be able to go <laughs> over 8,700 nautical miles. So incredible range capability, as I mentioned before. Um, look at that. That nose design is a little bit different. Triple seven three hundred ER uh, with even it's more capability in this. It's a blunter nose. Plane. Interesting. Thank you, Emily. So, Ted, so what we're watching is uh, this is the maiden flight of the Boeing 777X. It just landed at Boeing Field. Seattle history in the making. Hopefully, Boeing getting a bit of a break that they they need so badly. So thank you. Thanks for having me. With the successful first flight of the Boeing 777X. Yeah, nose like the 787. A lot of the design features right, in now, this 777X are CEO, based off of Stan, Stan, what is the 787. Oh, is, here uh, they come. Here's, oh boy. Just, uh, the emotions <laughs> are high. And, uh, well, there it is. A week of, act of absolute uh, triumph or tragedy and now triumph in aviation. That's what makes aviation so special and so interesting. Uh, Boeing 777X maiden flight. Thanks so much for watching. So, thanks so much for your support of this channel on Patreon. It, 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 it's tremendous. Thanks so much for all of that. We'll see you here. Pete, come say goodbye. Get off that computer. Say bye-bye, Pete. How do I turn this thing off, Pete? Let me see. Just... And...